Yeah, um, this kind of piggyback off a pastor message this morning about um, a believer in Christ showing showing his belief by the life that he now lives or he or she now lives and um, it's very important that we understand what God have to say concerning our our salvation concerning our conversion to him repenting of our sins and no walking with him it is very important that we establish what God has to say concerning these things um, because one could easily be deceived with, with everything floating around one could easily be deceived into thinking that they are in a right standing with God when they are actually not you know um, because of all the misinformation floating around the lies and, and the deception floating around the enemy is busy he is about his work planting those seeds of deception and, and trying to distort the truth of God wherever he is but we know beyond the shadow of a doubt that God's word will reign supreme amen alright so um, I'll do the reading. I'll read straight through from um, verse 1 down to 9. And then we'll go over it a bit. Go over it a bit and, and expound a little bit about what exactly Peter is saying here. All right. So it starts off saying, Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained the precious faith with us, through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of our Lord and of Jesus our Lord. According to his divine power had given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that had called us to glory and virtue whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience, godliness, and to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacks these things is blind and cannot see far off. And had forgotten that he was purged from his whole sins. And forgotten that he has been purged from his whole sins. So what we have here is Peter bringing to remembrance. That we have been saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. And he tells us that this faith will produce in us a desire to want to show that we have been saved, right? And he, use, he uses specific language here for a reason, right? Starting off, grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. How is grace and peace multiplied unto an individual? Through the knowledge of God. And of Jesus our Lord. That is the only way grace and peace is multiplied unto an individual. By them knowing who God is. By them knowing who our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is. By them coming to this conclusion based on the Holy Spirit's confirmation of God's word in them. This is the only way grace and peace can be multiplied unto an individual. We must know God. 
We must know our Lord. We must know him that saved us. We must know what we have been saved from. We must know that without him stepping in, God stepping in, Christ taking the sins upon himself, my sin, your sin, everyone that believes sin, without him doing that, grace and peace could never be multiplied unto us. It is only, only because of what he has done. And we must know this. It must, it must pass mere knowledge, mere, 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 mere information and become something that we know within ourselves. We must know that we are his children. We must know that we are adopted as, as the message said this morning, as the message was relayed this morning. We must know that we are adapted into his family. We must know these things. Verse 3 says, According to his divine power, had given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Through what? Again, through the knowledge of him that had called us to glory and virtue. No, there will be no change in an individual if they do not know the God that, that they say they are serving. God, God has given us everything, everything we need for life and godliness according to this passage. Everything we need to live this life on earth right now and to live it in a way that reflects the glory of God. That is godliness. He has given us everything we need to do this. Do we not know that the Holy Spirit is within us? If indeed, if indeed Christ is our Lord, if indeed we have been saved, the Holy Spirit has taken up residence inside of us. God is living in us. Therefore, we have everything we need for life and godliness. Why does it say life and godliness? Because it's not enough to just say we know God. God must live through us. Paul said in, in, in the book of Galatians, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I that live, but Christ that lives in me. And the life I now live, I live by faith. In the Son of God who loves me and have given himself for me. That is the understanding that the apostle came to. That his life is now no longer his own. And that God works in and through him to showcase his glory. To manifest his spirit through us. He doesn't, do, he doesn't do it all willy-nilly like that. We must come to a place where we know this to be true. We must come to a place where we know this to be true. Now, like, like any child, a parent disciplines them <laughs> whenever they, they're going wrong if they love, if, they, if the parents love their, that child. The same God does with us. And, and th that's how they learn. So that's how we learn as well. Right? God is our father. And like any loving father, he disciplines his children. He makes it a point to say that, that if we are not disciplined, we are none of his. And he uses strong language here that would be very offensive in today's time. But he says that we are bastards. If we are not disciplined of him. We are none of his. In the book of Romans, the Apostle Paul says, As many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. As many as are led by the Spirit of God. We, we hear that echo here. We hear Peter echoing this right here when it says that he, that, that, that God and of our Lord and of Jesus our Lord, according to 
as his divine power had given us unto all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that had called us to glory and virtue. He didn't just call us to glory, he called us to virtue as well. And he places emphasis on it. Throughout the entire New Testament, we see where the apostles are teaching, where, where the, writers, the, the, the writers of the New Testament are teaching, commanding, reminding, correcting, that we are supposed to carry ourselves a certain way. It is impossible to have the living God inside of us without practicing godliness without putting into practice the things that the very God we claim to serve says that we're supposed to be doing it's impossible it's impossible for someone to be a child of God without having that family resemblance we will have that resemblance somewhere, somehow the fruits of the spirit of, of our God will be manifested in our lives. Again, we're not talking about perfection, but the things that we once lived in, reveled in, was okay with. All those things that was against our God have become to us as well, as vile as it is to him, Therefore, we cannot continue to live in that way. Do we have struggles in, the, in, in, in many areas? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Each of us. We have areas where we struggle. We have areas where we fall. We're not perfect. However, we cannot live the way that we once did and be okay with it. Because the living God has taken up residence in us. And it goes on to see it. Verse 4. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these might be partakers of the divine nature. Partakers of the divine nature meaning that we partake in this, the fruits of God's spirit. The divine nature We partake in God's nature. We start to see things the way God sees them. We start, we start to, to, to develop the mind of Christ as it says in, 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 in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. We start to develop the mind of Christ. That's why Paul implores us in, in Romans chapter 12. Do not be conformed any longer to the pattern of this world. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good and pleasing and perfect will. He implores us. As I mentioned, this is throughout the New Testament. In, in, in the book of Colossians, he's telling the Colossians to keep your mind on heavenly things, on things above, not on things of the earth. Keep our minds fixed on him. In the book of Philippians, he said, let this mind be in you that was in Christ also. This is where the battle takes place. This is where we stand or we fall. In our, in our knowledge of who our God is. We see a person nonchalant in their worship of God. We see a person that does not know God. We see a person having no issues walking in a, walking in a certain way or living a certain way contrary to their God. They do not know God. It is impossible for us to know the God of the universe and outrightly, outrightly defy him like that. Without feeling anything. Having the spirit of God inside of us will. Not, again, not saying that, that, that we're 
perfect, but we cannot continue living the way that we once did. And we'll get into that in a moment. However, right now, in, 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 in the book of Peter, he's telling us that God promised the promises, his great and precious promises that he gave us, allows us to be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through loss. <laughs> having escaped the corruption of the world through loss. That is where we stand. If we have Christ, if we have Christ, that is where we stand right now. We have escaped the corruption that is in the world through loss. God gave us that. Jesus told his apostles, he said, in this world you will have trouble, he said, but take heart, for I have overcome the world. Paul said, in him, in Christ, we are more than conquerors. In him. Why? Because he conquered. Therefore, we conquer. If we believe in him. If we have knowledge of him. Um, and and this, is, this is what the entire idea here in these verses is talking about. Our knowledge of who he is. Do we know him? Do we know him? Do we know him according to, to how he sp- speaks about himself in his word? Or do we know him according to second-hand information that we heard from somewhere else? Or, 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 or we grew up knowing certain things because somebody else told us? Or did we, did we hear from him ourselves from his word? That's what makes the difference here. I can't have a relationship for you. You can't have a relationship for me. Brother, you think think it's possible for you you have a relationship with my kids to me? That's not possible. This is something that must be done personally. We must know our God personally. If we are to hold on to these promises that he gave us. If we are to know him. It puts. It, it, it puts us in a place of responsibility. Alright. And listen to, listen to how Peter put it in verse 5. He said besides this. Besides the fact that, 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 that God made us partakers of the divine nature. Besides the fact that, that, that we have escaped the corruption that is in the world through us. Besides knowing that he has given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Besides these things. Besides knowing that he called us. According to his own glory. Right? Called us to glory and virtue. Besides these things. Giving all diligence. Again, telling us that we must do this. Giving all diligence is saying that we must be careful to do this. We must remember to do this. Right? Add to your faith virtue. That sounds heretical if you really think about it. Someone saying adding to your faith. But that's not what he really means. He's not saying that you need to do something to be saved. He's saying that because you're saved. Because you're saved. You must start to walk in a certain way. Add to your faith virtue. Virtue. And if we... If we look at the if we look at the meaning for virtue real quick one second let me get this here virtue means goodness <laughs> why would he tell us to add to our faith goodness we never had nothing good before 
But now, because remember, he told us that God called us out of that, out of the corruption. He gave us everything we need for life and godliness. So now we're able, empowered by the Holy Spirit, empowered by him, we're able to act on what we believe now. We're able now. If indeed it's, it is Jesus Christ that we believe in, if indeed he has saved us, redeemed us, and given us his Holy Spirit, if indeed, if indeed that is the case, we now have the ability to carry out, the, the, we now have the ability to carry out this belief. We have the ability. So Peter is telling us that we are, we, we are to be all diligent in doing that. <laughs> He didn't say you're saved and now go and do what you want to do. No. We need to be all diligent. Giving all diligence. Add to your faith virtue. And to virtue, what? Knowledge. Get to know our God more. Only where any of us could do that is in his word. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Rightly dividing his word. Nobody could tell we nobody could tell we who they are better than themselves. Who could tell us who God is apart from God? Who could tell us who God is apart from God? And so he is telling us who he is by his word. And we need to we need to 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 learn more by adding the knowledge of who he is based on what he said about himself. That's how we could stand on these things. We can't stand on it if we don't know. If we don't know, not to say that that, that our Lord won't bring us through because he who began a work in us will bring it to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Amen? He will bring it to completion. But that's not the issue. That's not the point. The point here is that we are commanded. We are commanded to be actively involved in this process. Being all diligent. Being sober minded. Being vigilant. Why? Our adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion. Seeking someone to devour, to devour, to swallow whole, to destroy. That is, what our, that is what our enemy wants to do. He wants to destroy us. Make, make, no, make no mistake about it. The devil isn't our friend. What he's presenting to us isn't for our benefit or our good. It's for our destruction. And the only way any of us will even know what is happening is if by the word of God, he shows us. David said something. He said it beautifully. He said, your word is a light unto my path and a lamp unto my feet. I could actually say, where I'm going, I can see where I'm going if the Lord's word is lighting my way, is lighting my path, then I can see where I'm going. If not, I'm just like a rat going for the piece of cheese on the trap. Where's your brother? <laughs> no different. No different from the big, humongous fish biting the bait with the hook in it. No different. Because I can't see the hook apart from God. I can't see the trap apart from God. He is the one that shows these things. Just think of what we were before. Think of our lives before. Think about, think about, about where God brought us from. Think about these things. Where we are now. 
you know this is a blessing that we can be here in the house of the Lord and, 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 and getting to hear his word. This is a blessing. It's a blessing. And it's easy to feel tempted that we're missing out on something else. But everything that we need is right here. He said that he has given us everything we need. That pertains to life and godliness. Everything. Everything we need. There is nothing excluded from everything. <laughs> and he said he given, he's given us everything we need pertaining to life and godliness. Now, we were adding to virtue knowledge. Now we need to start to act on this knowledge. He said, and to knowledge, temperance. Temperance means self-control. Now, God, the teach we more. It is show, he is showing us that we are now able to carry out this by his spirit. Remember, we come to, we've come to a place where we recognize that this is God in us doing these things recognizing who he is, recognizing who he's made us, recognizing what he took us out of, recognizing that knowing him, that that setting our affection on him is the means, the only means for us allowing or, or, or us benefiting from what he is doing in our lives. God will always be God. He will do what he does. <laughs> you know, um, unfortunately, um, and, and all, all, all parents know this, we, we have some children that are, that, that, that are very, very um, wise in the regard that you can speak to them and they listen. But we have some Real, so some real hard years one. <laughs> I, I I could attest I was one. You know, I was one, and 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 the amount of beating I had to take <laughs> to come to to come to terms with some with with some realities. I mean, uh, sitting sitting back and thinking about it. Praising God, of course, that I came through it, but realizing, man, I, did, I, I, I don't think I had to take all of that if I just stop a little bit and just listen. You know, in, instead, of, instead of trying to force my way. It, 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 it doesn't work. I mean, in, in a fight between us and God, God will always win. <laughs> always. All right? So, now we're knowing, we're, we're understanding, we're adding knowledge. And so now, based on what we know, we need to start to carry ourselves according to that. So we need to add self-control or add temperance to the knowledge that we have attained. God is showing us that such and such and such is not all right. Such and such and such we must do. And so we must do it. We must walk in his ways. Right? He says to temperance, patience. <laughs> we must continue to do it. <laughs> Perseverance. We must continue to do it. All when we don't feel like it, all when it seems pointless, all when, all when, when um, um, no one else is doing it. He's talking to us individually. He's talking to you. You're seeing. If you're seeing, you have the Holy Spirit in you, and He's telling you. To do such and such, then you must do it. Continue in it. Do not stop. Do not stop. Verse 6 And to patience, godliness. God wants us to be godly. <laughs> Go figure. God wants us to be godly. God wants us, his people, to be godly. 
He told Israel, he's telling us again, and Peter said it in, in his prior epistle, he's, he, he reiterated it. Be holy, for I am holy. And we see the means of getting to this godliness here by systematically adding to our belief in the God of the universe, in his promises, in the knowledge, that, in the reality that, that he is who he said he is. He has done what he said he has done. He has given us everything we need for life and godliness. We add to that by what? We add to that by starting to act accordingly to it. And continuing to add to that knowledge. Continuing to, to control ourselves and, and carry ourselves in a manner that is worthy of being called a son or a, or a daughter of God. Submitting to his word. Submitting to his word. We submit to each other because we submit to him. Amen? We submit to each other because we submit to him. We do what he says. These things are our big pills to swallow because of our flesh, because of the way that we were raised, because of whatever the case may be. That has nothing to do with what he has commanded. It has nothing to do with what he has commanded. He says, we must do. He says, we must do. A Lord, a Lord in the term that we call Jesus Lord, does not ask, he commands. He commands. It's not up for debate. Our opinions doesn't matter. When the Lord has said, we must do Verse 7, to godliness, brotherly kindness. <laughs> I, 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 I took notice of something here. I look how far down brotherly kindness and the last one um, to brotherly kindness, charity or love. I, I, I looked at how far down on the list that is. It's telling, it's telling us explicitly that unless, unless, we come to a place that we, one, know our God, two, are putting into practice the things that he says we must, and three, persevering in that, we are not capable of brotherly kindness or even love. Not biblically anyway. Not according to the word of God anyway. We are down at the very last he's saying to add these things. Why? Because we must be equipped and know who he has made us. Know beyond the shadow of a doubt that he is sovereign. Know beyond the shadow of a doubt that we are his. Where we stand, he took us out of darkness in and brought us into his marvelous light. We must know this. Before we can start to shine. That light. To others. But if I'm not sure I'm saved. How can I convince someone else that they are? Or how, how, can, I, how can I call someone to something that I myself am not sure about? How? We must know these things. Again, God is God and he will do what he do. And however he uses us, praise his holy name. However he uses us. Throughout whatever times of difficulty, uncertainty that we may have, he can and does use us through those times. However, if we are going to be intentional about what we are doing, and this is what it's talking about here. Us intentionally doing these things to getting to know who our God is. He's telling us to do these things intentionally. I 
right? And the last things that he said to add to our faith is our, our brotherly kindness and charity. The last two things he said to add. So that 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 goes without saying that it is in order for us to 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 have brotherly kindness and to show the charity that God is talking about here, we must have our relationship with our God. Everything else up until this point is us having a relationship with God intentionally, getting to know Him intentionally. Not waiting for, 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 for signs and wonders to drop out of the sky, but intentionally adding to the faith, adding to what we say we believe. Intentionally doing it. Not looking at what someone else is doing and say, well, they're not, they're not doing it, so I won't. I don't need to. But coming to a place where we can fall on our faces in front of a holy God that we know we had no way of being in his presence apart from him judging us. Coming to that place and say, saying, Lord have mercy on me a sinner. Overwhelming gratitude. For the amazing grace that he has shown to us. Knowing where we were before. What manner of love. Has God bestowed on us. That he has has called us. (laughs) Sons of God or children of God. What manner of love. But even though we, we deserved. The hell that, that, that is waiting for everyone that does not accept the gift of God. Even though we deserve that hell. He, by his grace, before the foundation of the world. Chose us. Chose us for this very moment right now. We could be right here listening to his word. Or what he has to say. Getting to know him more so that this can be a reality to us. What he is saying is a reality. It's the only reality that that exists really. Everything else is a deception, a lie, a farce, a delusion, illusion, a mirage. Everything else. Verse 8. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in what? In what again? The knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. If these things, if we are putting into practice, adding to our faith these things that that, that Peter is telling us here, we will neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Jesus Christ. We will always be bearing fruit. Fruits of the Spirit. Fruits that last. Fruits in keeping with repentance. Showing that there is a God. Showing it, not just merely talking about it, but showing that God lives by our lives. And not merely our words, by our lives. Verse 9. But he that lack these things is blind. Any person that is not growing may not be a Christian. And if they are a Christian, they are blind. And cannot see far off. And has forgotten. That he was purged from his old sins. Forgot the reason they got saved. Forgot that hell awaited them. Forgot that Jesus bled and died in his place. Forgot that. that Jesus' 
righteousness was imputed to him so that he can escape escape the corruption that is in the world through lust he has forgotten these things he has forgotten that God has given him everything he needs for life and godliness everything that pertains to life and godliness God has given him he has forgotten these things if this is not the trajectory if this is not the way a person is living their lives adding to their faith of course that means with practice failure failure is inevitable while practicing but the reason we practice is to get better Eh? the reason we practice is to get better and anyone not practicing these things needs to really and truly test themselves to see if they are in the faith indeed but whosoever whosoever is putting it into practice it says that we won't be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that is the best place to ever be. To know your God. To know the creator of the universe. Beyond the shadow of a doubt. Beyond the shadow of a doubt. To know that he is sovereign. To know that he will take care of us as he always has. To know that he will bring the work that he started in us to completion unto the day of Jesus Christ. To know these things. How can we be unfruitful? How can we be unfruitful? God will always be good. Praise God that he chose chose sinners like us to show his goodness to even more that he chose to show it through. Let's pray. Lord, we give you thanks and praise, honor and glory because you are more than worthy. We pray, my God, that as we close off tonight and as your word rings in our hearts, we pray that it produces a crop. We pray that we we aren't barren or unfruitful in our knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. We pray that you continue to help us to grow in your name, Lord. Praise your holy name for the lives that you've given to us up until this point, Lord. And we look forward to see seeing what you will do in our lives as we progress. We don't know yet what we, what we will be, but Lord, we trust in you. We see what you have been doing for us, through us, in us, and we praise your name. Thank you, my God, for the grace that you shower on us each and every day. And we ask that as we go our separate ways, that we can continue to keep you at the forefront of our thoughts to keep our mind fixed on heavenly things so that when it's all said and done, you are the one that leads and guides us. Help us to trust in you with all our heart and not to lean on our own understanding, but in all our ways acknowledge you so that you can direct our paths. Apart from you, Lord, we can do nothing. Help us to remember that. Help us not to be like the world around us, Not to conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. So that we can know, we can test and approve what your will is. Your good and pleasing and perfect will, my God. Praise your name for everything. And we ask that you bless us uh, throughout tonight. We ask that you protect us, those of us that, that are going out tonight. We ask that you lead, guide, protect, my God. Only you can do these things. We praise your name. Jesus' name. Amen.